we're talking about blighted ovum, and the first thing we want to discuss is what actually blighted ovum is. So you see, um, pregnancy is something that is very exciting. It changes your life. You're so excited when you see that you know positive test in your urine. You're so over the moon. Um, but like I normally tell our members, you're not fully confirmed a pregnant lady until you've done your ultrasound and we've seen that the embryo is there, that the sac is there. So what happens in blighted ovum is a situation where normally the sperm will meet the egg, fertilize the egg, no problem. The fertilized egg will implant in the womb, no problem. But for some reasons, for some explicable and inexplicable reasons, of which most times what can cause this might be chromosomal issues or cell division or poor quality egg or poor quality um, sperm. So normally, after the fertilized egg is implanted, in the womb about the fifth to the sixth week the whole developing baby is supposed to form what we call an embryo that's the normal standard remember in some women after fertilization they can have bleeding that bleeding might coincide with the plantation time so the time the fertilized egg is trying to settle in the womb because the womb is friable by friable i mean the womb is sensitive it's supplied with a lot of blood vessels so in course of trying to settle in the womb they can experience spotting that spotting is called implantation bleeding so most women can bleed during pregnancy especially in the first trimester but Almost all the women that bleed still go ahead to have normal pregnancy. But there are a couple of women that bleeding might be a sign that something is going wrong. So you have to report all bleedings. So in blighted ovum, for some reasons, about that time, you're supposed to have the embryo forming. The embryo will not form. And deceptively, when we check your beta SCG, which is the pregnancy hormone you check in the urine, and the blood, it will still be high. Because once you've confirmed that pregnancy is ongoing, the placenta will keep producing beta SCG. But in this situation, the production of beta SCG is deceptive because there are so many other conditions that can lead to production of beta SCG. So the only criteria you need to confirm clinical pregnancy is to go for ultrasound and demonstrate that the sac and the embryo is there. So if for any reason you don't have the, the sac and the embryo demonstrated when you go for your ultrasound, you're likely going to have the situation I'm talking about or you might have a condition we call chemical pregnancy. So just getting a positive test is good. And luckily, most people don't even bother going for the ultrasound. They just live their normal life. But clinically, for you to confirm pregnancy has occurred, we have to see the egg. We have to see that sac, the gestational sac, because that's where the baby, the fetus, and everything are going to develop. So that's what blighted over is. So it's a pregnancy without the embryo. That's why it's called an embryonic pregnancy. You don't have an embryo inside the place it's supposed to occur. And it's very, very common. It's very common. Matter of fact, it's the leading cause of early pregnancy loss or miscarriage. And the reason is this. Most people that have this don't even know. Let me just explain. So most women that have blighted ovum don't even know because guess what it's very silent so you can miss your period and you will just think maybe my period is a little bit delayed then suddenly 
your period comes, it, got, it gets delayed for a few days or about a week. Then you have heavy, heavy bleeding. Then you probably have cramps, just like you normally have in your period. Without knowing that you were actually pregnant, but the pregnancy wasn't viable. So you've lost the pregnancy early without knowing. So there are so many women that go through this. They just normally have, think they have their normal menstrual period, which was delayed without knowing they've actually miscarried. So if you're not actively looking forward to having a baby and you're not actively checking your beta SCG, so many women would have lost their baby without even knowing they had a baby. So it's the it's the one of the most common causes of early miscarriage. But let me just say this: in as much as you have blighted ovum, the chances of you having another blighted ovum is kind of limited. You can have it, but it's not going to stop you from having a normal delivery, a normal baby. So it's something that is bound to happen and it didn't happen because of what you did or what you did, you did not do. Absolutely nothing you can do to stop blighted over. It's an accident that must happen because nature and God, it's very, very creative. I know it's very painful losing a baby, but let me tell you this. Your baby that will stay, will stay. The baby that won't stay, it's not going to stay. No matter how you beat yourself up, it's not going to stay. That's the reality in life. So you have to be careful. You have to know where to draw the line. You have to know to make sure you don't overreact. You know, when you put so many emotions into something, it's very hurtful. It's very painful. But most times we don't even know why things happen. So anything that is related to the chromosomes, because chromosomes are the things that carry your genes. So if in course of development, something happened that was terribly wrong, the body will reject that. Most times the body wants to be in the way God created it. So the body will not want to carry a baby that is not developing okay. That's what actually happens in most miscarriages. There are, however, some types of miscarriages that can happen because of some specific causes. So if you have some infections in your body and it's not properly treated, it can lead to miscarriage. If you have what we call incompetent cervix, if your cervix is not competent, that means your cervix is not able to retain the baby, you can have miscarriage. There are so many other things that can lead to miscarriages. But one key thing you have to understand, anytime you have any sign that something is not sitting right, you have to seek help. Don't sit back and try to figure things out. No assumptions. Like I mentioned, so many women will have bleeding in pregnancy. So many. 85% of women can have bleeding, but they will still go ahead and have their normal baby. So the fact you're having bleeding doesn't mean you're going to lose the baby. The fact you're having bleeding doesn't mean the baby is going to stay. It can go anyway. But the most important thing is to report to your caregiver. Very important. So I've already mentioned the likely symptoms and likely way blighted ovum can present. So it can present with nothing. It can present when you're, you're getting a positive pregnancy test, missing your period, having normal cramps, having normal heavy bleeding, without knowing you've actually miscarried that baby because of this issue. So it can be deceptive. And let me just remind us. Remember, any baby that dies on its own or any pregnancy that ends on its own without being induced or forced before 20 weeks before 20 weeks is termed miscarriage after 20 weeks 
is called still birth, which I discussed yesterday. So that's the classical cutoff point. So anytime you have loss of your baby before 20 weeks, it's classified as a miscarriage. But if it goes beyond that, it's called a still birth. So whichever way the baby is not going to be viable. What do I mean by baby is not going to be viable? The baby is not going to be alive. But we have some specific terms we use to classify all these terminologies. Very important. So normally, normally when the egg is fertilized, like I mentioned, the normal pattern is the egg gets fertilized, the eggs move from the tube, gets to the womb, being plants five to six weeks, it settles, and guess what? The sac develops. The embryo is already there, but for some reasons, which I've already explained, the sac might still be there and deceptively be producing the normal pregnancy hormones. So you might still be there thinking you're pregnant without knowing the pregnancy is already gone. So that's one thing you have to be mindful and careful. And that's why it's very important to make sure you go to a professional, an experienced professional. Once you're pregnant, I will advise you, don't spare any of your money. Make sure you go to the best provider in your city. The reason is very simple. Pregnancy is very complex. From the very point you're pregnant to the day you deliver, anything can happen anything can go wrong and i tell you this god is the only person that decides what happens some women do everything we tell them not to do they smoke they drink they do stuff but guess what they have no more delivery no more baby nothing happens to the baby some other women they want just to have that experience of becoming pregnant and it's not even forthcoming and some other women will do everything right when they're pregnant and they still lose the baby that's why man is not god but one thing you have to do is to do your own part your own part is to be very attentive to your body very alert know the normal know the abnormal when something happens please seek help immediately and that's why i keep emphasizing once you're pregnant You've already entered into a sacred relationship with your baby and God. So you're not supposed to take anything whatsoever. No medication, no concussion, no nothing. You must run everything by your doctor. The most important person in your life when you're pregnant, it's not your husband, it's not your dad, it's not your mom, it's your doctor. Because you're on a mission. And that mission is what? To deliver your baby hale and hearty. So you are not supposed to take any medication whatsoever. The only medications you are supposed to take are the ones given to you by your doctor. None. No painkillers. The only painkillers allowed are the ones your doctor gives you, especially the painkillers we call NSAIDs non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. You don't want to take them. Ibuprofen, Aleve, and all those in that family, you do not want to take them when you're pregnant. It can cause a lot of troubles. Anything whatsoever, report to your doctor. It's, let it be that you're disturbing your doctor but for the right reasons. Don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to your mom and your your, your your husband's mom you know they will come with their own doctrine do this don't do that to yourself you're not going to forgive yourself if you contributed to the demise of your baby because time is of essence in pregnancy but in this particular topic we are discussing tonight you don't have any contribution to whether you're gonna have blighted over or not it's something that is gonna happen it's gonna happen okay so we're going to talk about how to diagnose, um, you know, this condition. How do you diagnose blighted ovum? So how do you know you have it? Like I mentioned, you have to present to your doctor. 
your doctor will ask a couple of questions, your last menstrual period, take the history, you know, take care of the symptoms, try and tie a couple of things together. But the only diagnostic criteria for blighted ovum is to do an abdominal ultrasound to demonstrate that that womb is empty. That's the only way to diagnose blighted ovum. And the only person that can diagnose blighted ovum is an experienced doctor, an experienced OBGYN, an experienced obstetrician. We need to see that sac. We need to make sure that nothing is in there. That's the only time you can say categorically that you have blighted ovum. That's the only way. There is no other way. So it's not a diagnosis you go to anybody to give you. It's a diagnosis you must go to the right channel to get. Very important. And the reason why I'm emphasizing on this, it's also in line with the point I mentioned previously. So if you stay back and you want to use the blood level of the beta SCG to confirm you're still pregnant. When you check the beta SCG, it will still be going up, deceptively telling you that you're pregnant when you're not pregnant. Why? Because the sac can be there and still be producing the beta SCG. But when you take a look at the womb, we, we discover there is no baby there. Very hurtful experience. But guess what? Joy coming in the morning, no matter what. What you need to do is to follow the next line of um, discussion I'm going to have with you. So now you've had blighted over. One of the worst experiences that can happen to anybody. So what's next? So there are two different management protocols for actually three. So some women can opt to just sit it out. They won't you know, take any medical approach to, they would just want to allow their body to expel the whole contents on their own. That's not the best option. It's always good to expel anything external in the body. Once your baby is no longer viable, the remnants of your baby inside your body can mess your life up. It can actually lead to a lot of complications, including death. So the first management for blighted ovum can be what we call dilatation and curettage. The DMC, you guys normally call it DMC. It's dilatation and curettage. So we want to look inside our womb. We want to remove everything inside. Everything. For some women, this is the best option because some women are built in such a way that, oh, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Let's go to the next level. So some women might want to have a complete closure of that ugly event and move to the next level. And this is actually the best approach to blighted ovum because you want to remove everything that will be detrimental to the lady from the womb. When you do this, you give yourself time to recover. One thing we don't do well in Nigeria, which is very bad, everything is spiritualized. You know, someone wants to blame you, either your husband is blaming you or your husband's mom. Or, you know, a lot of blame and shame. But anybody that it's bereaved should give themselves time to mourn, to recover your physical body, your emotional part, your psychological body, and your spiritual body. You have to recover fully. You have to feel the grief. Don't hide it. Express it. You're going to go through the stages of grief. You're going to be pissed. You're going to be in denial. You're going to look for who to blame. You're going to be depressed. And finally, you contemplate. Then guess what? You accept. And when you accept, you move to the next phase. It mustn't go in this sequence. But I'm advising you. It's not a common practice back home because, you know, we have a different way we see the world. But that's the right thing. Over here, we have people that can actually talk to people that have lost their baby. We call them doulas. So they go to you, they do everything to help you go through that phase. 
it's very important you follow your doctor's instructions when you have tragedies. You do not want to rush back to become pregnant immediately because guess what? If you don't address that particular thing that led to that condition and you rush back, chances you're going to have that same problem is very high. So you need to go with your doctor's instructions. The other method of taking care of blighted ovum is to go through medications. So there are some medications we can give you that will help expel the contents from your body. This option is not always the best because we can give you the medication. You can stay one or few days before the baby will come out from your body. And for some women, they just want to end that nightmare and move on. It's just like some women, they induce and they still carry the baby inside their body, knowing fully well that the baby is gone. It's a very traumatic experience to women, especially. But these are the three different ways you can approach blighted ovum. And the most important one and the recommended one is to go for D and C. Remove everything in there. Then normally we ask you to relax and make sure you have three completed different periods before you try again. Now I'm going to say this now. Do not rush back into becoming pregnant. Anytime you have miscarriage without going to investigate. So in some cases where they have the expertise, when we remove the tissues from your body, we will send it to pathology. Pathologists will look at the tissue to actually see what could have caused that. But in some places, they don't have those facilities. But if you are in a place where they have the facilities, please go ahead and use it. But by and by, blighted ovum, it's not what, what you know, you should go overboard and you know, be so worked up about it. You're still going to be a mother. You're still going to be a father. What you need to do is to go easy 